Welcome to today's five minute lesson. We're back to chemistry again. So today I'm going to talk about valence electrons, which are an extremely important concept you're going to see over and over in chemistry. Basically, you've heard the word valence electron probably a lot. You have to understand that all atoms essentially have a bunch of electrons that fall into two categories, core electrons and valence electrons. Essentially, the valence electrons are the electrons that have the largest principal quantum number in their electron configuration. So let's take a simple example. Let's look at carbon, right? Carbon's electron configuration goes 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, right? Remembering all that? Okay, great. So that means that the um, principal quantum numbers are the first numbers for each group. So it's the 1, 2, and 2. So which one's the biggest? 2. That means that all of the electrons that have principal quantum number of 2 are the valence electrons and everything with a lower number are the core electrons. So in this case, carbon clearly has 4 total electrons in the n equals 2 shell, so that makes uh, it have 4 valence electrons and then it has 2 core electrons. If I go for a more complex example, you might see why this matters. Let's look at iron. Iron's electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d6, right? If you look at the periodic table, iron's got uh, uh, six, uh, six rows down in the, uh, or six columns down through the transition metals, which means that the highest, the largest principal quantum number is not three, it's not the last one, it's the four. The four is the one that's, the, so that means that those two electrons that are part of the uh, uh, four, that, that four are the valence electrons, all the other electrons are core electrons. All right, so if I actually diagram what iron looks like, there's its nucleus, there's the 1s2, the 2s2 and 2p6, the 3s2 and 3p6, there's the 4s2, but then I'm adding more electrons to the d orbital in the three level, which means these two electrons in the outermost Shell, the two electrons, those are its only valence electrons, which means all the transition metals have only two valence electrons. All right, yeah, so if I look at the periodic table again, that means that if you just are, basically what column you're in is going to determine what, uh, uh, what valence electron, how many valence electrons there are, right? So basically the way can you go, one, two, skip a few, they all have two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The eight, the noble gases have eight valence electrons, and that's the maximum. You cannot have more than eight valence electrons because when you start adding more electrons, they start being added to the next level because your S and P are already full. You started adding to the next level's S before you start filling in the, the D and F orbitals for any level. So essentially, valence electrons, we consider that just the maximum of eight, right? And so when we draw an atom we're using a Lewis diagram, so, which we're going to see a lot of later, Lewis diagrams. For example, if I want to draw carbon in a Lewis diagram, that means you're only drawing the valence electrons. And you start, and, and it's often people, so remember carbon has four valence electrons. People often go one, two, three, four. And that's incorrect. You don't want to do grouping them until you've already put four singles down, right? So carbon actually goes one, two, three, four. That's a good... Uh, Lewis structure for carbon. If I want to do it for nitrogen, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, right? Because nitrogen is five. It's in group. Uh, it's in essentially group five. It has five valence electrons. That means it's uh, it has now has one pair and three lone electrons. If I do it for oxygen, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So there's six valence electrons on oxygen, right? So basically, all you have to do for valence electrons is look at the number. Uh, what, what column it is, what group and the periodic table. The core electrons are very important though indirectly. They don't participate in chemical reactions normally. It's only the valence electrons and that's why the number of valence electrons matter so much. But in the next video when I talk about the periodic trends you're going to see why the difference between core and valence electrons is so important. Thanks for watching.